Hi everyone, um, this is a video from Math 3273, and we're going to talk about the matrix subspaces. Okay, four of them. Okay, so let's start out with an M by N matrix. Let's call it A. Okay, and the entries are in some field F, like maybe the real numbers or something. Okay, so each row has N entries, each column has M entries. Okay, and if we fix A, we have four subspaces, which we can get from it. Okay, the first, well, just in no particular order, but we have the null space of A. That is all the column vectors in Rn, such that AX equals zero. Okay, so that's our first um, subspace. Um, okay. So you have to solve AX equals zero. That gives you all the vectors in the null space. We have the column space. Well, instead of looking at the equation AX equals zero, try and find all the possible values of AX. Okay. So all the vectors that AX where X is in RN. Okay. Kind of like the, it's kind of like, um, or, uh, clearly it's related to the null space. Um, how is it related? Well, like, if you were trying to determine if the columns were in linearly independent, you'd be solving the equation AX equals zero. Another way to write the column space is as the span of the columns of A. So these AIs are the columns of A. Okay. And you can do the same thing, but with the rows. So you have the row space of A it looks like Y transpose A, where Y is in RM. In other words, the row space is just the span of the rows of A. Uh, and we just write each row, we take the transpose so that the result is kind of living in RM. Okay, and usually we write like RM as column vectors, okay. Um, so this is also the same as the column space of A transpose. Okay, and we also have the null space of A transpose, otherwise also known as the left null space. Okay, and these are the vectors Y such that Y transpose A equals zero. And these vectors come about if you're trying to determine if the rows are linearly independent. Okay. Okay, so basically we want to know, you know, um, we want to know what's the relation between these subspaces and how do you find a basis for each one? Okay. Um, so we'll talk about that today or in class on, yeah, in the, in the next class. Um, we have elementary row operations. Let's see, what does it mean? What is an elementary row operation? Well, it means you take a matrix and you do one of these three things. Replace the i-th row with the i-th row plus delta times the j-th row. You can switch the i-th and the j-th row, or you can multiply the i-th row by a non-zero constant c. So doing one of those three things is an elementary row operation. And if you do um, a bunch of those in sequence, we get this notion of row equivalence. Okay, so A is row equivalent to B. If there's a sequence of elementary row operations, epsilon one, epsilon two, all the way up to epsilon K, such that doing each um, elementary row operation in sequence, um, starting from A gives you B, right? Okay, that means A is row equivalent to B. Um, okay, and we have some theorem which says that um, if A is row equivalent to B, then there exists an invertible matrix P with B equals PA. And the proof of this theorem is to write every time you do a elementary row operation 
that has the effect of multiplying A by an elementary matrix. Okay, and that is how you prove um, this theorem. Okay, and then the second part of the theorem says, well, not only that, but if you have an M by N matrix, there is a row reduced echelon form matrix R that is row equivalent to A. In other words, we can write R is P times A with where P is invertible. Uh, row reduced echelon form. Remember, um, each non-zero row, its first non-zero entry has a leading one. Um, the columns with the leading ones have no other one, have no other non-zero entries. Um, let's see, the the leading ones kind of go. Um, down and to the right, and all the zero rows occur after all the non-zero rows. We'll see an example today as well. Um, and the last thing I want to remind you of is, well, we have the null space, and the nullity of A is just a number, which is the dimension of a null space, of the null space, which means find a basis for the null space. Um, the number of elements of the basis that's called the nullity of A. Okay, this is also um, this is equal to uh, the number of free variables in in your matrix, and the rank that's the dimension of the row space, the number of non-zero rows in the reduce, row reduced echelon form. Okay, and then the theorem, the rank nullity theorem says that rank of A plus nullity of A is N, where that N is the number of columns of A. Okay, so with this, uh, this is just a quick kind of refresher. Um, so that's it for now. Thanks for watching.